My friend, the researcher, Allison McDowell, visited me on Long Island where I have family. Here is her historical scavenger hunt of Long Island. We visited seven different locations. I just wrote a guest post on her website, wrenchintheyears.com, about these different places. Allison also has a YouTube channel. After I wrote the post, I realized I needed to supplement it with some images, so I'm making this video. The first stop, Cold Spring Harbor Labs Eugenics Records Office. The grave of Henry Stimson, Secretary of War during World War II. Children and Screens in Jericho, New York. Stewards of Change in Centerport, New York. Brookhaven National Laboratory. Last but not least, the Tesla Science Center at Wardenclyffe. That was basically an overview. I'm going to add some details here, but if possible, read the guest post on wrenchinthegears.com. The first stop was the Eugenics Records Office at Cold Spring Harbor Lab. I'm from the nearby town of Huntington and took biology classes here as a young child in the mid-70s. The lab was established in the year 1890, and as you can see from these pictures, it has changed a great deal over the years. Also, here are some screenshots from their website to show some of the projects they're working on now. The people who helped us at the eugenics records office were very nice. They even saved Allison a parking spot in the parking lot. Here, Allison is doing her research. She is studying the origins of the Human Genome Project. Here is one of the documents she was looking at, and you can pause the video to read. If you really want to find out why a project is being done, follow the money. Who is paying for it? Why is the U.S. Department of Energy financing the Human Genome Project? A quote from the CEO, knowledge of genomes is advancing that, that, that energy production. I don't know about you, but this makes me really think differently about the movie, The Matrix. According to this New York Times article, all that remains of the eugenics records office are files and photographs. Here is the library of the eugenics records office. According to the article, the lab turned its genetic focus to breeding better plants and animals. Here are screenshots of some of the books in the library, and you can pause the video to read these, but to summarize, they're absolutely shocking and they are racist, and one has to wonder why these books are on display and not in a box in a basement somewhere. Did the eugenics program end, or did it morph into the Human Genome Project? A five minute drive from the lab is the cemetery where Henry L. Stimson is buried. He is the official who made the decision to bomb Hiroshima and Nagasaki, resulting in the deaths of over 200,000 Japanese civilians. I grew up in a house directly across the street from a school named after him. Stimson, who died in 1950, was a longtime resident of Huntington, which is my hometown. The Huntington Historical Society prominently displays the portraits of Stimson and his wife. Lawyer, soldier, statesman, member of the Sons of the American Revolution. What was he responsible for? Uh, dropping the bomb on Japan in World War II. And then the aftermath of that was the destruction of life and radiation about the changes to human, human biology through radiation and the nuclear stuff, leading to the Human Genome Project. The ones who survived, they, they did scientific studies. studies. But not to be ameliorate their pain, but just to study what happened to them. In these places, I come to tell the stories and set an intention for healing. And um, I place hearts places and they're with natural materials that I find or some that people send to me and um, sort of an intention for making these past harms right, you know, right. For, for addressing these. So, and I have, uh, so these are um, acorns uh, that a friend sent from Central Park actually, I think, and then there are um, in them, I have little holly berries that we gathered yep. up today from uh, Cold Spring Harbor Lab. And there's oak leaves also from Central Park and then some sage. I can't remember right. if somebody had sent me the sage. 
and then I have a little felt heart that I brought. Um, some mussel shells from the Schuylkill. The ginkgo leaves are from Central Park, and then I have some tea that a friend in the Netherlands said that it was sent from China, a Qigong practitioner, oh. and so I'm gonna include a little bit of the tea, and then I have some wild uh, rice uh, from the Ojibwe people that a friend sent me. You know, again, putting good energies into sure. the system that like we're, we're making sort of a, a statement around natural life. I have a braid of sweet grass that someone sent to me. I have a, um, some creosote that a friends gave me from Tucson and then Jason got me the, a replacement because I lost my bird eye piece of wood up on the Alta Ski Resort. So I have, this is my replacement. And, and then I brought this uh, horseshoe crab, which is this amazing specimen. But again, they, they right. do uh, use horseshoe crabs for all sorts of experiments. And so um, sure. weirdly, we had pulled over to set an intention <laughs> at Cold Spring Harbor and there was this strange bell tower and I go over, I'm like, I need to get a picture of that bell tower. And on the plaza next to the bell tower were like half a dozen of these, they're, it's, it's just the skeleton of the crab, the crab, right. is, but just sitting out. And I'm like, okay, so you need to come with me. So anyway, so he's gonna keep, and it's ancient, like ancient life, both the ginkgo and the horseshoe crab, the, yeah. the, the, the ancient vitality of the natural world, so. In Buddhism, the horseshoe crab is considered the reincarnation of the honorary samurai warrior lost in battle. The horseshoe crab enshrines the human soul for the Japanese people. I don't know that I can ever get this right, but trying to oh, do a little bit of sage. Okay, here we are. So, singing bowl sent to me by a friend. Clear the energy. So in terms of setting an intention for healing here, for the attempted erasure of natural life on this planet through the use of nuclear technologies and domination, um, that we're in this beautiful natural place. We're surrounded by rhododendron and moss, and it's so green and it's been a rainy day, um, but it's very vital and alive and vibrant. Yes. And so we're here to say this can't be erased it can't be erased um but we're here to get stand on the right side i think of this sacred engagement and um that's so. very important I forgot we also have some dandelion I think this is some of the last of my Rochester dandelion that someone oh, sent and it's, nice. it's important because uh, Rochester is a center for photonics and the optical computing and I think tomorrow we're gonna try to we, I'm sure we can't get close to it but at least near the sign in the public space of, of the functional nanomaterial center at Brookhaven and um, that sort of this connection between nanotechnology photonics nuclear technologies um, it, it's all part of the story. So the history isn't actually past, it's just reverberating through. So we're trying to sort of cleanse the field. Next was Glen Cove, New York, where Acclaim Entertainment was based. The next stop in this rainy day historical scavenger hunt with Allison McDowell, Children and Screens. It's yes. all about the playfulness. Why are we at this location in Jericho, New York, Allison? <laughs> This is, uh, interestingly, the mailing address for an organization called Children and Screens, which is sort of the lead on justifying good quality educational technologies and why children should learn through digital media, but they'll be the arbiters of it. Yeah, right. And I'm very skeptical of that entire premise. Dress for this organization is, um, uh, here in this building and in within a county. Right, so it's not, it's, you're it's in like, Merrill Lynch, it's, it's not, it's not like Merrill a normal Lynch, 
nonprofit that right. you know you, you wouldn't have you would have a regular address not just an accounting firm right but the accounting firm is in this building and so yeah so right. we're setting an intention uh, sort of intent that you know my my contention is that these technologies for education are largely about um, their military technologies and they're they're meant to condition children to build the metaverse and live in it and defend it and the thing is people are not understanding the nature of psychological programming that goes into all of these things and you know some might call it a civilizing force but I to me I feel like it's very much a containment force and to, to actually sap the the imaginations of children so in yes. fact one of the head of uh, one of the heads of Nvidia building the, their Omniverse they said you know children have imaginary worlds and they want to link that to AI and have their them build their imaginary worlds in the metaverse for That's NVIDIA hard. and every child has a virtual world or numbers of them trapped in their mind into a real virtual world in the metaverse. Key to that is it has to be AI. So that's a little concerning. And you know, essentially the goal of schools is, on, is to train the children to live in this new reality. And for the most part, the teachers and the parents don't understand what the new reality is. So I'm here to just say like, hey, I right. have some questions and exactly. dress is in this building. We're doing it here in front of the, the bull, the Merrill Lynch, cause there's gonna be um, betting, betting on life outcomes and compliance and it's all tied in with global markets like legalized gambling and right. you know I've often thought that this is sort of dealing with the labyrinth dealing with the Minotaur and and the like the Wall Street bull is like the Minotaur so you know this is probably a pretty useful uh, metaphor to stand I here I see you bull and we're gonna we be playful with our natural materials and say that there are some other options and look over I'm gonna put this beautiful spiral oh, pretty. Here too. And these shells are from my my friend Eve. We sent them from Florida from Satellite Beach. Oh. And again, these satellite technologies are all sort of part of this. So oh. The next stop, Stewards of Change in Centerport, New York. The next stop, Brookhaven National Lab. As I mentioned in the guest post on Allison's wrenchinthegears.com, I have a relative who used to work here. Last but not least, the Tesla Science Center in Wardenclyffe, New York. It's actually a nonprofit, and this is the director. She gave us a tour. It was so interesting. She's very knowledgeable. They hosted a fundraiser and people could purchase a brick and look what someone wrote. <laughs> this is the building where his actual lab was and they're trying to raise money to renovate it. There had been an 18-story tower there and check this out. The tower, the inventor sank huge shafts 120 feet into the soil. Could there be something special about the Earth's electromagnetic field in this spot? It was here that we learned about the historic RCA tower that was demolished in 1977. As many older Long Island residents are aware, Shoreham, the nuclear power plant that never opened, is also close by. Note the close proximity of these four energetically significant locations. Question, could this location be significant in terms of the Earth's electromagnetic field? Another question is why are the rates of cancer, particularly women's breast cancer, so high on Long Island? According to this website, the environmental factors are smoking and grilled foods. On an unrelated note, Brookhaven and Nassau are collaborating to protect astronauts from cosmic radiation. Speaking of radiation, Allison mentioned at Stimson's grave that the real reason they dropped the bombs on Japan was to study the impact of radiation on human beings. Despite the well-established health effects of radiation, there's a movement to try to convince people that radiation is beneficial. Are people being psychologically conditioned to think that radiation will make them some kind of superhero like Captain America? The small, underdeveloped Steve Rogers was exposed to radiation and became a super soldier. Speaking of experiments, some of the books in the library at Cold Spring Harbor were about the groundwater of Long Island. Given the geology of Long Island and its isolated nature, well, it just makes you wonder. I want to thank Allison for demonstrating how to set intentions for healing in defense of natural life.
for sending meaningful vibrations out into the world, for exposing systemic harms, and activism in defense of future generations.